Hey you guys, so now I have my fiber kind of spread out. These have all been soaked in vinegar. So you can see the fire star right here. It's the, it's the brightest color. This is the merino and this is the alpaca. I laid these out and you can see that like I tried to keep the folds as flat as possible. Not so much with the fire star. The fire star will be okay. But especially my merino, since my merino comes in a very thick roving, my alpaca comes in a really thin roving. So I was pleased with that it all spreads out nice. These are all going to be relatively the same color, although um, they will all dye differently because they are different fibers and the fire star will definitely take on a more vibrant color. But the color we're going for today is turquoise and I suspect that from reading that the alpaca takes on a slightly duller shade than, than say merino or other wools and that's my water that I was boiling in the microwave. Um, I suspect that the alpaca will come out a different color than the merino. If it doesn't, that's super cool, but if it does, I was prepared for that. A regular old pickle jar that I'm going to be mixing dyes in, and I will go ahead and do that off camera. Okay, so I have mixed up my turquoise dye I here. Have one of these little styrofoam spongy thingies. I got it for 40 cents at art supply store, so, um... Yeah, we're just gonna dip this in here, squeeze the sponge a bit, and um, a little PSA while you're watching me do this about fiber dyeing and and I and using specifically um, acid dyes. You are going to want to do this in a well ventilated area. You are um, if you're weird about that shit, wear a mask. You do not want to inhale the dry powder in any way whatsoever so keep that very much in mind I am noticing also that my styrofoam is wanting to stick to the wool that's fine because my hands also like to stick to the wool but the reason why I like to use these um, these right here these jars they're very tall it kind of minimizes the amount of dust that could get kicked up when you're mixing your dyes. I find that to be helpful, but yeah. Obviously, don't get this stuff in your eyes, blah, blah, blah. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna put some gloves on and flip these two right here. Actually, no, I have tongs for that shit. Look at my new toy, tongs. I'm all professional now. Oh, the dye actually almost went completely through. That's fantastic. So. Ooh, these tongs are cool. Damn, I should have got tongs a while back. Okay. Enough of my musings. On to the flippings. <laughs> Now, I do want a heathered look to this because I am I have a natural brown that I'm going to be mixing with a dyed brown and then some gold fire star. Uh, um, and by the way, I don't think I mentioned what color I used. I literally used the turquoise color um, by Jacquard. I haven't tried any of the other brands, but I'm sure that they are all comparable. And I'm going to set my oven to 250, and I probably should have done this before. Oops. Okay, 250. And now we let it preheat. Alright. I... I think we did good. Yes, I think I did good. Hey guys, familiar old setup. I have my Aztec gold color now. And this is going to be the browns. Ooh, I actually, ooh, I really like that, okay. So, here, I'm starting with the Fire Star because I'm going to do the Fire Star in Aztec Gold and I'm going to do the Merino in Chestnut because I want I want the brown to be uh, as lively as possible so 
to do that, I'm really doing um, a purposeful heather. So I'm very purposefully making sure that I am dyeing these in different colors before I blend them all together. And you'll notice I started off with clean utensils. This is actually a completely different brush since my other one isn't dry. I didn't want any residual blue or turquoise or whatever getting into it. So, yep. And I'm going to use my tongs to flip this because I'm wearing gloves to protect my, my hands and everything. But at the same time, though... Um, I don't want to get my gloves super dirty and then get everything that my gloves touch super dirty. So, because I'm okay having hands with blue dye on them. Blue tends to come off uh, the skin very well. The more natural tone colors, the browns, the reds, those will stay and bother you. <laughs> so, just a little FYI that I tend to do. Um, I think I'm going to wear my gloves from now on just cuz cuz I really need to start doing that but as you can see my fire start is taking everything super well these um, actually soaked longer than the other ones ended up soaking for because and I'll give you a tidbit on how the actual oven everything worked so, and I have a lot of this left. I think I'm going to do the tail end of this merino with some Aztec and just kind of put some of this Aztec gold in there. This is, like I said, a very, very nice uh, shade of brown. I really like it. It's, it's, it's a nice orangey brown without getting like weird with it, you know? Like if I were to try to mix this color myself, it, it, I, I would get weird with it. <laughs> if that makes any sense to you guys. So I'm just going to use up the last little bit of this. I'm going to pour it here and just kind of leave it in. And now I'm going to mix up some of the chestnut. Let's check this spot here. Mm, you know, I was really excited about this chestnut, but I think what I'm going to end up doing is just putting spots of this around, since I do want a heather. So I'm just going to put spots of this around. But I think I like the Aztec gold, because it's more of this beautiful golden brown. That's, you know, Mama's Biscuits, what I wanted. This, um... This chestnut color is, is not what I wanted, so I'm actually going to put that jar down, use it for something else eventually, and mix up more of the Aztec gold that I like. This is more of the Aztec gold. And, you know, I just want to say that as artists, we don't make mistakes. What? We just add um, unexpected design elements, right? So this shit happens, and that's just how I roll with it. Um, I do think that the small bits of dark that I have in here will kind of add a different flavor to the overall piece. I won't do this next time. Um, but I think that for this piece, it'll be all right. Because, again, I'm... I plan on making something for myself out of this. So I'm not super crazy about like perfection. So you don't need to be super crazy about perfection either, especially if you're just starting out, which if you're watching this video, I would guess that you are just starting out. Now I did leave my other stuff in the oven for about uh, 45 minutes, roundabout. M the first half hour was on 250. And the last 15 minutes was on 260, so I'm just going to put this in at 260 um, for 30 minutes and see how warm it is. Now, I know that I over the turquoise. I haven't rinsed it out yet, but I want to show you guys how I um, rinse my fiber out, um, especially now that I have this nice cookie sheet to do it on. 
Okay guys, so I know that I dyed this to excess. I know there's extra stuff and you can see the blue at the bottom of the pan where I just set this on here. It's already dripping out dye. So I'm gonna show you what I do to kind of um, counteract that and get the extra dye out without moving my fibers around, without, you know, felting. And to be honest, um, wools will felt very, very easily. I used to do this with my strainer. Now that I have this awesome cookie sheet, I'm all about this awesome cookie sheet. And usually I would do this over the sink, but since I'm trying to show you guys, um, I'm doing this with the pan underneath. And now we just get more water. You can see that the turquoise is a lighter color, right? Um, but it's still very, very turquoise, right? Now I'm not going to squeeze this at all until I am completely done rinsing it because if you if you rinse and squeeze and rinse and squeeze and rinse and squeeze and you're doing wool or even this fire star then you're gonna have issues you're gonna have felting so now that I feel like I'm done squeezing out the excess dye I'm going to squeeze it with my fingers I'm just kinda gonna test the water the water's a little bit light blue that'll be okay and now I'm just gonna squeeze it out. And because, you know, like I said, this is Firestar, I'm not too, too worried about it. But look at that. It's absolutely beautiful. This is just to show you how the dye job turned out. So I have here my, oh man, the color is a little washed out on camera. That's okay, because this is more of a comparison anyway. So this is the Firestar, this is the Merino, and this is the Alpaca. And as you can see, the Alpaca is ever so slightly a more dull color than the merino is. Just ever so slightly, which is gonna make it a really good heather. That's what I was banking on. The Fire Star took the dye in a more vibrant brilliancy, so it kind of makes the other two look dull by comparison. If I just take the Fire Star away and you can just see the alpaca versus the merino, here we have how our browns turned out. So this is the Fire Star. And this is the Merino. So this is going to make a much more interesting Heather, I think. Uh, which is great because brown is usually not the, the focal point of a piece. It's usually whatever color is coupled with the brown, if it's coupled with anything. So I think that this is really gonna draw more attention to the brown. I hope it turns out the way I think it will. But that will be in the next Project In Depth video with Le Blending Board. <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I very much enjoyed dyeing from the oven my first time. In fact, I did another dye job. Um, the other night because I just I just had to I just had to, to do some more dye experiments because dying from the oven I like it so much more it's less hassle it's less cleanup as well and I wasn't expecting that so that's probably how I'm gonna do all of my dye jobs from now on super excited to have shared it with you guys super excited to let you guys see what the end results are if this helped you out please hit like and subscribe and as always leave any questions or comments down below because i'd love to hear from you guys happy crafting